Sometimes automation actually gets in the way of an excellent business process. By that I mean there are times when building a fully automated system isn't always in your best interest. So in this video I'm going to be talking about some different options that are available to you and why you might choose one path over another. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life with no code tools. Specifically, Airtable is the center of everything that we do, the back end database and the heart and soul of all of that. And we use a lot of automation as well. And in this video, we're going to be talking about when you might choose to not have a fully automated process and more specifically why you'd make that choice. But before I get into it, I do want to invite you to join me for my upcoming live webinar training. Once a week, I hop on a live webinar and showcase the steps to building a fully automated system that will help you to unlock new potential for your business, grow more quickly, and ultimately save you time. Personally, I save about 20 hours a week of my own time using automation in my business. So if you're interested in learning those steps, I welcome you to join me using the link below. But without further ado, let's hop into the heart of this and talk about automated processes versus what I like to call a semi-automated process. Now let's zoom out and talk from a high level. I like to think of processes as falling into one of three buckets, either completely manual, semi-automated, or fully automated. And a lot of times, I think we have a tendency to want to automate as much as possible, but there are instances where full automation actually works against our best interests as a business. So I've put together an actual live example here, and this is 100% real and legitimate. This is a process that I've used in my own business. And in fact, at one point I had it as a fully automated process. And I came to find out that it was actually costing us new leads, costing us money, etc. And so when I changed it from being fully automated to being a semi manual process, or I guess the flip side of that is a semi automated process, suddenly I was able to interject a little bit of human touch into the process, which helped sales reclaim where they should have been. So let's jump into a high level example here. I've created a clone form on my screen of the very form that I use to help people when they're first signing up. And we're trying to see if there's a fit between somebody who wants to hire us and the ideal client that we're looking for. We want to make sure that we're a match for all the clients that we take on. And there are our clients respectively are a match for us. And that's what this application process is all about. So we've got a bunch of questions here on our application. Anything from, you know, fill out, fill in the blank, like describe your business to what's your current revenue, you know, uh, what are you looking to have built, etc. Now, the thing I want to point out here is we have a mixture of qualitative and quantitative data that we're capturing. Quantitative data being, you know, a, a numeric value or a specific choice even in the instance where we give them three options to choose from. Qualitative data, by contrast, is a fill in the blank field. So in this case, they're able to tell us a little bit about themselves or tell us a little bit about the system that they're looking to build. I don't necessarily want to use a fully automated system for this because of the fact that it uses qualitative data in conjunction with that quantitative data. So by this, I mean, let's look at what the back end process could look like for a form like this. We've done this a number of times on this channel where we've captured form data, built an automation and plugged that data into an Airtable database. No problem there. And in this particular example, I have a unique view set up that is looking specifically for any situation where we've not yet submitted a response to the new application. We also have no outcome chosen yet. And it was either created by me or an automation. And these are the filters that make sure that only new applications are going to show up in this view. So the application is filled out online. It gets plugged into our database here and I get a Slack message that tells me it's time to look at the applications because we've just received a new one. 
So in this case, I filled this data out for myself and you can see that I've done a couple of things to help me make the most quick but educated decision. So quick rewind here. I could have, and I previously did, build this as a fully automated system. So in doing that, what you can do is build some formulas that calculate the output that you desire based on the answers that you get in the form. So for example, you could assign quantitative values to these answers. So these are all the different you know, possible answers that somebody could give when they fill out this form. Similarly, here are some other answers they could give, etc. We have a bunch of different questions here. The point is, if there are certain answers that you might receive on your application or your process, and you want those to instantly reject you know, the application process, or maybe they mean that you need to get a little bit more information, so you have a specific follow-up email that you send out in those cases, you can certainly build that so that's part of a fully automated system. But the reason that in this case that didn't work well for me is because I found that we started rejecting a lot of applications with people looking to work for us that actually were good fits, good candidates to work with us. And it just turns out that they filled out the application in a way that I didn't expect they would. And so by building a fully automated system, including algorithms that calculated exactly what I thought was a good fit or exactly what I thought was not a good fit. In fact, I wound up denying applications for people filling out forms to work with us that were in fact good fits. So I made the shift here to move us to a semi-manual process. The process is still fully automated with the exception that it needs a layer or an element of human touch. So rather than using algorithms to compute the outcome, we have this human interaction level where I actually have to make the decision. And I strongly recommend that anytime you're building an automated system that has qualitative data, that you use some form of personal touch as well. In fact, when I came back and thought about this later, it made complete sense. Why in the world would I include qualitative questions on my form if I didn't intend to have those questions read and analyzed before making a determination of whether this client or prospective client was a good fit. So as it turns out, anytime you include qualitative data, just remember adding some sort of semi-manual step there will work in your benefit. So in order to get this done, then the automated process is as follows. We build an automated system. In this case, it captures that form and plugs it into our database in Airtable. The Slack notification is sent to me privately. I get that either on my phone or on my computer. I'm then able to open up wherever that application is and I get to read through it. Now I have added some visual cues to myself to help me make a quick decision if it's an easy one to make. In this case, you see that we have different options here employed by an established business or an entrepreneur who's already in business. These are two options that somebody could pick from the form that actually encourage me to think that this would be a good person to work with. But if they choose kindopreneur with no established business, that kind of tells me that maybe they haven't fleshed out their idea. So I'm flagging that with a different color. Similarly, if they're just thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, they're not yet established, maybe not the best fit, for this particular service that we offer. Similarly, over here on another question, I've used color coding again to give myself visual cues. If their revenue is more than $5,000 a month, in this case, I'm getting that green indication to me that's like, all systems go. But if they're very low on monthly revenue, maybe because they're just getting started or they haven't really got traction yet, that could be a red flag as well. And on the highest side of things, I actually include red as well. So if somebody in this case answers the form and says, I don't have the financial budget or resources to invest in this project, obviously they're not a good fit for us as a company and as a service. So I use these different color coding techniques to give myself visual cues when people have answered questions in a way that might cause me to want to give pause to how I respond. And really what that means is when I see that yellow or red, 
I'm gonna jump into this at a deeper level and really break down and get an understanding of what's going on for this client. Now, lastly, I'm looking at those qualitative measures as well. So I'm reading about what the business is, what the system goals are that they've you know, put forth in that example. And so all of that comes together to help me formulate my outcome. And then I've chosen to build four different outcome potentials for this particular automated process. Development fit means they're a great fit for our team and we're gonna send them an automated email with next steps. That's pretty straightforward. Sometimes though, people will respond to these questions in a way that makes me think that they maybe shouldn't hire our development team. Maybe they have a limited budget or maybe they wanna learn how to do this themselves and they've suggested that to me here when they filled out the form. Well, in that case, I wanna have a different message sent to them. Something along the lines of, hey, thanks for filling out our application, but we're not sure if you're exactly the right fit for this service. However, we have a coaching program or a course that we could offer that's more within budget for you and might get the results that you're looking for cheaper and more efficiently. So don't necessarily think that you have to limit yourself to just saying yes or no when you make a decision with a semi-manual process like this. Now lastly, I also include either bad fit or manual follow-up. And these are just ways for me to show the rest of my team that yes, in fact, I have evaluated this data that came in and we have an automated process that supports each one of these different outcomes. So the key takeaway here is whenever you're working with qualitative data, do know that you can bring in elements of a human touch that allow you to make more intelligent choices than just a strict algorithm. I hope you got a ton of value from this video and you're already starting to think about ways that you can turn more processes into semi-manual steps in your business. Thanks for checking out the video. And if you have any questions, please drop them below in the comments. Look forward to connecting with you in the next one. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly and we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.